Almost every place on Earth has some laws that are either outdated or just plain strange, but today we're going to talk about some strange laws from India that are still technically in effect today. What, what strange laws do all of you have in your hometowns? Let me know down below. And with that said, I'm your host James, and these are the top 10 weird laws from India you didn't know existed. And we're starting off with the Factories Act of 1948. This law states that while women can can work in factories, they just can't do the night shift. This aspect of the act was written at a time when women didn't step out of the house very often at night and was included in consideration of the culture at that time. This is still the law today, however, and it definitely impedes a woman's freedom to work where they want to work and, you know, be out at night. Not that anyone really loves working overnight, I've done it sucks, but sometimes you have to, and this limits the option for a lot of women in the country. What if you only have time to work overnight? What if you even need a second job? Plus, you're typically paid more working overnight, so not having that option, definitely not ideal. Next up, we have the Motor Vehicles Act of 1914, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this one has been ditched. Now, you'll have to let me know in the comments, I'm sure you will, but uh, if it has, it's fairly recent. This one was around for a long time. In Andhra Pradesh, you need to have good teeth to be a motor vehicle inspector. Yeah, gotta brush them and keep them as pearly white as possible, otherwise, forget about inspecting those cars. You, you can't be doing that if your teeth look like corn. You gotta have a smooth set of Tic Tacs in your gums in order to do that job effectively. Yeah, this is definitely a strange one. Oh, and you can't can't have flat feet either. I'd, I'd love to be in the room. Job interviews. All right, perfect. You, you seem to know a lot about cars. Resume solid. Now, now smile for me. Take off those shoes. Ah, your your feet. They look like fish fins. And it looks like you've been, uh, you're washing your mouth with what, with chocolate or something. Get out. Also, what, what scale does one use to determine whether someone has good teeth or not? There's, there's gotta be some kind of line, right? Isn't that kind of up for interpretation at a certain point? Obviously, some people do have really bad teeth and you know immediately, but some are kind of in between. Yeah. Hard to say with this one. The Sarias Act of 1867. So uh, here's a positive one. Definitely something you won't see in many places. Section 72 of the Indian Sarias Act of 1867 states that anyone can enter a hotel or any building that is used to shelter and accommodate travelers. And regardless of whether they're staying there or not, they can use the washroom or drink water from the facility for free. Pretty nice law. Sometimes you're out and about, you've had some food that just ain't sitting well with you, your, your butt's about to leak God knows what, run into a fast food place to use their washroom, they tell you customers only, so now you gotta order more food, that will probably land you in the exact same situation in about an hour from now. Not the case in India, apparently, so uh, keep that in mind if you go for a visit. This one would be amazing for traveling, actually, considering how much food you end up eating may or may not agree with you later on. Now, violating this law doesn't come with a very high penalty, just a small fine, but still, not a bad law. Although I I can see some people really uh, taking advantage of it. At number seven, we have chewing gum, which is banned in Maharashtra. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering that name. You can't have it, you can't sell it, no blowing bubbles allowed. This ban was implemented to help keep the streets cleaner, which is honestly pretty understandable. Gum can't just be removed from the street easily like with other trash, and there's nothing worse than accidentally touching the bottom of a table and, and smearing your finger on someone's chewed up wad of gunk. I know there are a fair amount of gum chewers out there, but me, I, I honestly, I probably wouldn't even notice if it suddenly disappeared. I, I've never been like, you know what I'm crazy? Even right now, you know what I really want to do? I just want to chew on something that I can't actually swallow. Something st starts tasting okay, but loses its flavor pretty soon, and I just gotta keep chewing it until I can find a garbage can. Yeah, not not for me. If my breath is bad, I'll just I'll grab some mints or brush my teeth. Anyway, apparently this law has helped with keeping the streets looking better, so. That's great. Number six, the legal drinking age. The legal drinking age varies from state to state in India, but there are a couple states where the legal drinking age is as high as 25. There are other countries where the legal drinking age 
is also 25, but none that are higher. And uh, yeah, 25, it's a bit extreme considering the fact that citizens are allowed to vote and get married when they're 18. They just can't actually celebrate their own wedding with a drink. Now, in most places, the legal drinking age is higher than the legal marriage age, but uh, a seven-year gap, kind of extreme. The legal age to get married in Canada is 16, with written consent from a parent or guardian, of course, which is still very low. We might need to do a video on Canada. But the legal drinking age is just 19, so a three-year gap. There are other states in India where drinking is just banned altogether, which somehow makes more sense than 25. Number five, the Treasure Trove Act of 1878. Citizens in India can forget about trying to dig up treasure to strike it rich, unless they want to break the law, that is. According to this law, if you find any treasure valued at more than 10 rupees, you must report it. Failure to do so could spell jail time or a hefty fine, and I don't think you'd be able to pay that fine with whatever expensive item you found, unfortunately. This law isn't limited to items valued above 10 rupees, though. It also just means money, rupees itself, any amount above 10. They gotta report it to the authorities. I like that this one was written at a time where you had treasure, though. Now, we all these fancy names now for valuable found objects, but I like treasure. Oh, I want that word to make a comeback. Someone told me they're going cave diving for rare artifacts in some other country. My interest would be piqued, but if they said they were questing for treasure, I'm coming along, whether they like it or not. Number four, we have the Licensing and Controlling Places of Amusement Act of 1960. This one controls the amount of couples who can dance on a single stage at once, which is 10. Uh, any more than that, just too much. If uh, enforcers of the law come across 11 couples dancing on a stage at once, they can either boot one couple off the stage, not sure how they'd choose. I imagine they'd just try to determine which couple had the worst moves. Bear Embarrassment to the stage, get out of here. Either that or they just shut down the entire event. What happens uh, if there are just 22 random people dancing on a stage at once though? Does that still count? I also think this one should really depend on the size of the area or the stage, because packing 10 couples onto a tiny little stage, far more dangerous than having 15 dancing on a massive one. Also, the size of the people, I imagine could also be a factor here. What if you just got like 11 couples, but they're really small? Number three, the East Punjab Agricultural Pests Disease and Noxious Act of 1949. Part of this act regards dealing with a locust invasion. It states, notwithstanding, anything contained in this act in the event of any area being invaded or in danger of an invasion by locusts. The collector of the district or other officer authorized by him in this behalf may call upon any male person not below the age of 14 years resident in the district to render all possible assistance in carrying out preventative or remedial measures and in the destruction of locusts. It shall not be necessary to notify every person individually for his services and a proclamation by beat of drum or other customary mode in the village or locality shall be deemed sufficient notice to all effective persons residing in that village or locality. So yeah, if you're older than 14, you have to get out there and help deal with locusts and they may only be informed by someone outside with a drum walking down the street. Uh, yeah, you fail to get out there and battle some bugs, you can receive a fine or even end up in prison for a period not exceeding uh, 10 days. So at least it's a light sentence. The Indian Telegraph Act of 1885. The Indian Telegraph Act of 1885 established government control and a monopoly over telegraph services in British colonial India, enabling censorship and interception of telegraphic messages in order to control India and prevent revolts at the time. Now, obviously telegraphs aren't used anymore and India isn't under British rule, but technically this law is still intact uh, for some reason. There's not much use in doing away with it other than sheer principle alone, so I guess it kind of makes sense why it hasn't been repealed. But it's always a bit funny finding out that there are still official laws that are completely outdated and have no bearing on modern day society. Society. And coming in at first place has to be the Aircraft Act of 1934. This law states that citizens
citizens must have government clearance to own or pilot any aircraft. Pretty standard. I would very much hope that would be the case. But here's how aircrafts are defined in this law. Any machine which can take support in the atmosphere from the reactions of the air, balloons, whether fixed or free, kites, airships, flying machines, and gliders. You can't take your airship out for a spin without having some government permit. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you need to have a license uh, to fly a kite, and the license part is fairly recent too. For a long time, it was just straight up illegal to fly a kite, and you could wind up in jail or uh, even have a hefty fine. Pretty wild stuff. It's been a very long time since I've flown a kite, but it's just so fun. I guess I guess drones have kind of taken the place of kites for modern kids, but for a long time, this is all we had to fly through the sky with. But uh, not in India. Sorry to all those kids. You don't know you don't know what you're missing. Not much really. I mean, is flying a kite really that fun? If anyone's done it recently, let me know. With all that said though, I've been your host James and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.